Okay, what I like to do is take you through the central nervous system, specifically part of the central nervous system, the brain. And basically what I'm going to touch on are areas that are going to have functional effects if you have a stroke or cancer or some kind of trauma. So if there's a stroke in this area of the brain, what's it going to affect? If there's a stroke in this area of the brain, what's it going to affect? If there's a stroke in this area of the brain, what's it going to affect? I'm also going to touch on lesions that kind of gave us those ideas about what happens when you have strokes or damage to different parts of the brain, but they also give us insight into the complexity of how the brain works. Those are going to be as in red as I move along. I want to start with right here, this whole sulcus. So a sulcus is basically a valley in the brain, and this one's called the central sulcus. And the reason I want to start with that one is because it divides up the frontal lobe from the parietal lobe. If we wanted to do that real quick, we could talk about the lobes in terms of this whole lobe out here is the frontal lobe. Sorry, I'm going to have a lot of things written on here. So I don't really want to clutter it up too much yet. So that's the frontal lobe. This area right through here, put a little dot, kind of a little dot. That's the temporal lobe. This guy back here, I should have put it right through here, is the parietal lobe. Hit that again. This area right through here is the parietal lobe. I wanted to keep away from this area right here because this is called the occipital lobe. I got one more lobe left over, and that one's you can't really see, but it's in deep here, and that's called the insula. Okay, so those are the lobes of the brain. Now what I'd like to do is start on part of the frontal lobe, start working our way through what parts of the brain do what. And I'm going to start right here, so right in front of the central sulcus. Sometimes it's actually called the precentral gyrus. So pre meaning before the central gyrus, and a gyrus is essentially a hill in the brain. And this is primary motor cortex. And what primary motor cortex does is it moves individual muscles. Keep in mind that there will be some simplification here just because I want to have an understanding of what things are doing. Can't have a real, real complete understanding, but I'm going to get you the gist of what's going on. What the primary motor cortex does is it sends axons down to the spinal cord to move individual muscles. The next part, I'm going to simplify. Often there's primary motor cortex or primary cortex, and then there's secondary, tertiary, quaternary. So there's different areas that have been broken down and tell us different functions. I'm gonna, gonna stick with primary and then either motor association or I might use secondary. So I'm gonna, this is technically secondary, tertiary, and quaternary areas, but I'm just gonna call it association areas. So this is motor association. The way I like to think about this is if you want to We'll talk later about why you might punch someone in the arm. I mean, it's not necessarily me, and it could be a good job or something. But basically, if you're going to hit somebody in the arm, punch someone in the arm, um, you need to move individual muscles, and that's what the primary motor cortex is going to do. But somebody also has to take your hand and not move just one muscle, but move them together so that you can form a nice fist. And so the motor association basically does patterned motor movements. and planning. If you think about motor, it can get pretty complex. I mean, you might already kind of be a little bit lost, but we'll clean this up when we get to the basal ganglia and the cerebellum, because the cerebellum, this area back here, when we get to that, does pretty complex motor behavior. That might be the whole throwing of the fist using the whole arm and everything. So there's also going to be parts of that movement where you've just got small groups of muscles that have to coordinate themselves so that you can form a fist. And it's probably likely that those small groups of muscles are coordinated by the motor association. 
can move just forward of this. And this is called the frontal eye fields. And this is going to move the muscles of the eye. One thing that I think is pretty neat about the brain is you generally organize things that have to work together. And this area of the brain is going to move the hand. And this area of the, of the brain is going to move the eyes. And so having them right near each other is going to improve eye-hand coordination. Kind of similar is this area of the brain down here is responsible for moving the face and the mouth. But you can imagine that you might need to extend that area even further, use more cortex, to move the muscles of speech because speech is pretty complex. And that's exactly what's up here. This is a region that helps you move your mouth during speech. And that's called Broca's area. And we're just going to put it muscles for speech. So it doesn't think of what you're going to say, but once you've thought of what you're going to say, it actually moves the muscles of the mouth and the tongue and the throat so that you can create speech. Next, let's, t let's move further forward and we're going to put a lot of this together. This area is called prefrontal cortex. Prefrontal cortex is involved in kind of personality, judgment, right and wrong, morality, inhibition. Complex planning. I guess I said personality and I haven't written it, so let's write that. Personality. And here's where I've got a couple of my first lesions that I like to talk about. One of them is kind of a classic one and that was uh, Phineas Gage. Phineas Gage was a likable guy until this is, uh, I don't know exactly what years, but 19th century I believe when they were putting through the railroad across the western United States and Phineas Gage was working on that railroad and he was tamping down an iron rod into a rock so that he could put so he can basically blow this rock up, this boulder up, and get it out of the way so that the railroad could go through. But as he was tamping down the dynamite in the rock, it blew up, and the rod that he was using to tamp went up through his skull. Rod up through frontal lobe. Caused damage that turned a likable guy To a, let's just say a malcontent. Just not a very nice guy anymore. He just was, it was reasonably, or universally agreed that he had been a rel relatively nice guy, and after that his personality had changed, and he was no longer really a nice guy anymore.